Hello and welcome. Welcome back to the Reinforcement Learning Theory tutorial series. This is part three of an ongoing series. Uh, you're more than welcome to start here if you want, if this you just want to learn about reward and returns. Uh, but if you're interested in the rest of it, it's going over general theory, why algorithms work, what's going on under the hood, the math behind it, the theory, the intuition. Definitely check out those videos. I'll have a playlist and such below. As we go into the video, if you like, hit the subscribe button. It really means a lot. Uh, but so much for that. Uh, let, let's, uh, that's enough of that. Uh, let's get into it. I hope you like my, my little drawings. Um, I'm, I'm not an artist, but uh, I, I've been trying my best for you guys. So uh, <laughs> I hope you've been enjoying it. So rewards, rewards. They're really important, especially in reinforcement learning, where all our learning is you know, based around rewards. So as we're jumping into this, let me go ahead and get rid of this so we have some space to work with. As we talk about rewards, the first thing we need to talk about our returns, which are the rewards from trajectories. And, and I guess first, right, we should define trajectories. So what is a trajectory? And it's actually fairly simple. Re, uh, remember back, we were talking about uh, MDPs, Markov decision processes and environments and how we would simulate environments, right? So we had like a state space where we had a bunch of states, like state zero, state one, and uh, you know, it goes on. And then we had an action space where we could have action one, action two, action three. These are all different actions we could take you know, it might be up, down, um, or it could be 3.4. You know, these could have different values and states might be like a, the state of a tic-tac-toe game, like a circle in the middle. This would be one state. Well, a trajectory is very simple. It's sort of a, a playthrough of, or a simulation, the history of one of these simulations or one of these uh, playthroughs of a game or the environment. So a trajectory often, one way we, you'll see it denoted is, oh, that's not very good, a tau. My tau is very bad, as you can see. I've not practiced drawing tau. Maybe if I make it a little bit, okay, I'll, I'll take it, I'll take it. So tau, it's a little T thing. Um, and tau is, is short for trajectory, um, kind of. <laughs> anyway, uh, this will equal, generally the way this is represented is it's a state, and then the following action that was taken in that state, the resulting state, the action that was taken in that state, then the next state, action taken in that state. And, and you can see where this is going, right? And this goes until the end of a simulation. And a simulation, right, one full go through of the simulation, that is what a trajectory is. And this is sort of the history of it, right? The states and actions specifically. Cool, so not too hard, right? Um, trajectories, so let me write that out. Trajectory. You'll also very commonly hear um, rollouts. Oh, rollouts. And the last thing you'll probably hear, maybe you'll hear more, but uh, is uh, an episode. An episode, I think, is what's most common. Uh, it's at least what I use most frequently. But you know, you'll you'll hear all of these kind of interchangeably, and they all roughly mean the same thing. So that's what a trajectory or like an episode is. Uh, so what about this term I mentioned before, a return, right? Um, and a return, this is actually fairly simple. We, we have the idea of rewards, right? Like uh, a reward uh, could be positive for something good, negative for something bad, or maybe it doesn't have to be negative, but just smaller than what you would get for uh, something good happening. Uh, so the return is sort of the cumulative reward throughout a trajectory, right? So let's say we're playing tic-tac-toe uh, and we have, we end up in this, right? X, 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 O, O, uh, Let's say we end up with a state like this, X is win. So if we were X's, and this is like a three turns long, right? Maybe our first reward, uh, our rewards, maybe at first we get a zero uh, for this first one because it's not doing anything. Then we get another zero because it's not doing anything. But then we put our third X here, and well, what do you know? We won the game. So maybe we get one reward for that. So these would be our three rewards for the game. So in this case, one way we could calculate the return would be zero plus zero plus one equals a one return. This is one way to calculate returns. And this is what's referred to as a finite horizon. Horizon. Uh, undiscounted. Undiscounted return. And let me make some more space for us. Oh, it took me so long to draw this present. <laughs> it's so bad though. <laughs> uh, anyway, we have more space to work with now. So that's an undiscounted return. Um, why is it discounted? 
undiscounted, what that essentially means is that no matter how far after uh, or how far away this reward is, right, we, um, it's always counted as one. Uh, whereas with, a, sorry, not as one, it's always counted no matter when it happened, so long as it happened after the current time. Um, and we're talking when we're talking about returns, we're talking about the the whole course of this, right? Um, but oftentimes we'll be talking about rewards from a certain state. So say from the second state. So the re cumulative return coming from uh, the second state, everything after this would also be one. I mean the same for the third state. But you can imagine, let's get a little bit more complicated reward here, uh, or a series of rewards. So we have one, two, zero, five. Uh, so let's say we have something like this, right? Uh, well, in this case, our total return for this episode would be eight. We just sum it all together. Okay, um, but what if we're in this state right here? If we are in state, uh, we'll call this state zero, one, two, three. Uh, so if we're in state two, well, what's our return for coming from state two? And sometimes this is called the, the value, uh, or it's always called the value. <laughs> um, well, it's five, right? only five because we're not going to get the one and two that already happened we're not thinking about the past at this point uh, so we'll move on to the value uh, in the future but i mention this right now because it kind of makes sense to mention this with undiscounted and discounted returns because now i want to tell you what a discounted return is uh, a discounted return is specifically uh in what is it? this was a finite horizon so next is an infinite horizon did discounted return. Um, so what's this? And this is essentially the idea that, the intuitive idea behind it at least versus what I wanna go over. And the intuitive idea is that if you get a reward for doing something immediately, that should be more important than a reward that happens say 10 steps down the line or a million steps down the line, right? Um, there's sort of a, a good part of getting something done now. Now, whether or not we should be using discounted reward, that's a, another question I'll talk about sort of when we use it and when we don't want to use it. But the mathematical formula for it is something like this, right? So we want to have a, and I'll, I guess I should write out what it equals first, right? So the return often denoted by a capital R of a trajectory equals uh, the summation to infinity starting from the first state of r of t zero uh, times gamma to the t. What is this gamma? That is a good question. This is our discount factor. So this is called a discount factor. factor. And it's usually equal somewhere between zero and one, or always equal to somewhere between zero or one. Um, and essentially what this means, right, is it means in the very first step, in the very first time step, so let's say, let's say we're just, let's go back to the idea of taking whole trajectories, right? So we're starting from the first state here with this one, uh, this one reward. Well, in this state, we get a one reward, right? So this will be one reward plus, uh, and let's say our gamma is equal to 0 0.5. Uh, say gamma equals 0 0.5. Sorry, that's on the edge of the screen. Um, well, what would that mean? So it would mean, well, t to the uh, 0 0.5 to the zero, that's still one. So we start with one. Um, two is our next reward, right? Uh, two times, well, this would be what? 0 0.5 to the one times 0 0.5. Um, so this gives us one plus one plus, uh, well, this is a zero uh, plus, uh, and then finally five. So it's five times gamma is 0 0.5 to the 0, 1, 2, 3. What would this be? That'd be, I think, uh, 5 times 0 0.125, uh, which I don't know what that is. Or I guess it would be uh, like 0 0.6 something, um, I think, if I'm doing my math right. Uh, yeah. So essentially what I want to show you, right, is at the very first state here, we have the full reward. The full reward was 1. We're counting it fully, um, but as we go down and as time progresses, well, by the end here, even though there's a five reward at the end, it's only being counted for 0 0.6. So essentially the higher gamma is, the less important things in the future become and the more we prioritize things now. That's sort of the intuitive meaning behind this. 
So comparatively, uh, if we want to, and I'm gonna, oh gosh, what should I erase? I'm gonna erase some of this because we need more space. Uh, oh no, why do they keep doing that? I need to fix that. Um, anyway, so finite horizon, undiscounted returns, right? Um, and, and this is also where the infinite and the finite comes in, right? Uh, infinite, as in this can go on for infinity and it will still converge because of the fact that we have this gamma turn in here. And, you know, even if we go for infinity down the line, well, eventually gamma will get so small that all rewards are just negated. Um, whereas for finite, uh, you know, we can only deal with a finite amount of space. Um, and this this is really in terms of mathematical, like uh, algorithms we come up with down the line. For finite, uh, or for undiscounted returns, we can't really handle, you know, infinite series. Uh, things just get a bit wacky with the math. Maybe we'll get more into that when we get into specific algorithms. Um, but for now, the, the reason we do this can be infinite uh, is it, it just ends up being more mathematically convenient. Um, so the equation that I was going to mention for finite horizon is the return, uh, sorry, of the trajectory for uh, finite um, equals, I guess it would be t equals zero to capital T. So this is some point in the future um, of R of t. Very simple, right? Uh, so it's essentially just a summation over all the reward over the next t steps. So the only difference here really is the infinite versus the finite uh, and the gamma versus the no gamma or no scaling. Cool. So, you know, it's, it's not too complicated. Um, I think the intuition behind it makes a fair bit of sense. Generally, we do want to prioritize things immediately a bit more, um, though things in the future are important too. Well, the value of gamma sort of lets us decide how much we want to balance this. So one question you're probably asking is, well, what value should I use for gamma? What's, what's normal? And it, the answer is it depends. It depends on the environment. Uh, but there have been lots of studies that show gamma usually around the range of Oh gosh, I'm running out of room again. Um, let's just delete this example right here. Um, usually, so usually it's, it's always within the range of zero to one, uh, but usually within the range of 0 0.95 and 0 0.99 are probably what you'll see most frequently. Uh, and I hope that's big enough. I can hear it just in case. Um, but 0 0.95 and 0 0.99 are the most frequent. Um, so you can see these still do uh, value actions in the future quite a bit. Uh, we don't want to completely disregard them because they are very important. Uh, but yeah, that, that's what you'll usually see. So the next question you might be asking is, well, you know, we have finite horizon undiscounted rewards and we have infinite horizon discounted rewards. Which one should I use? And, and unsurprisingly, the answer is again, it depends. Uh, that being said, there are some sort of pointers you can use. I tend to see discounted returns used in the majority of things because especially in games where you have a lot of rewards throughout. Um, but in games where you tend to have maybe one reward at the very end of a of a episode, especially in things like board games, right, where it's like a win or a loss and that's your only reward, uh, finite horizon rewards tend to be used there more often. So like you'd probably see this in like use if you're using chess or go, um, you don't have to use it. Um, but you'd see undiscount or sorry discounted rewards in in environments more like uh, maybe self driving cars, driving cars because you know they go for a, a long time, uh, you know not infinite amounts of time, uh, but you know and you you also have these sorts of rewards that come and go. It's not just one big reward at the end. And also lots of games like Atari. You know uh, Atari is a very uh, very popular environment to test machine learning or reinforcement learning algorithms specifically in. And I think those are, are sort of the big things that you should know. Uh, so just summarizing that, finite horizon, undiscounted rewards, it's just the sum of rewards over a fixed time period, very commonly used when using board games or when you have one big reward at the end of a finite time series. Uh, and the sort of other option is infinite horizon, discounted returns, and you see these in pretty much all the other scenarios where you have very long time spans you're working over and when you have also rewards throughout um, sort of coming and going. And yeah, I, I think that sort of wraps up the key points 
of rewards and returns. There's not much more to it. It's it's fairly simple, uh, but you'll see this probably in every single paper paper you'll you'll read in reinforcement learning that has a background section, especially this discounted rewards. Most papers use it uh, again, except for like some board games and some other uh, a couple cases. But I I hope that was you know helped you out. This is definitely going to be a key point in the upcoming tutorials. If you did like this, you know, if you leave a like, subscribe to the video, I do really appreciate it. It helps out the channel. If not, that's all good too. Anyways, I hope you'll also tune in next time. Next time we're going to start actually breaking things down. We're going to get a little bit more into the mathy side next time. This is still then I think fairly light on the math. Um, I'm not sure if that's a good or bad thing to you, but I'll, I'll definitely break it down to the best of my ability. I hope you enjoyed. Thanks for tuning in and I hope to catch you then next time.